this is a reduction of order problem that in the end will require uh, expression of the solution in terms of a definite integral. So it's a good problem to, uh, to test a variety of skills. Uh, okay, so we have a second order homogeneous ordinary differential equation uh, with a t multiplying the first derivative and a negative one multiplying the zeroth derivative. And we're given uh, that one of the solutions is an unknown constant times t. This is very easy to verify that it is a solution. The second derivative of t is zero. Uh, the first derivative of t is a constant. This gives us a t, therefore. And then minus t uh, will give us uh, zero no matter the value of c1 for this problem. Our task is then to find a second solution using the method of reduction of order. This method is exactly like the method of variation of parameters for first order ODEs. Uh, we write a second solution, x2 of t equals u of t times t, an unknown function times the given uh, homogeneous solution. And just like in variation of parameters, this uh, seemingly non-specific guess, uh, because any, any function can be written this way. Uh, if you give me any function you want, I can write it in this form, a function times t, simply by dividing the function you give me times t. So this is non-limiting. Any function could have this form. And yet, this form will uh, allow things to cancel within the ODE that allow us ultimately to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We plug in this guess. The second derivative of this product gives us two derivatives of u times t plus two times the derivative of u times the derivative of t uh, plus u times the second derivative of t, which is, which is 0, plus t times the first derivative of this product which is du dt times t plus u times the derivative of t uh, minus the zeroth derivative of this product, u times t, which must equal 0. So as promised, this form of writing the solution makes some cancellations happen. We have a tu minus a tu. And so this term and that term cancel. And if we now collect. Uh, like derivatives of u, we have t times the second derivative of u dt squared uh, plus 2 plus t times t. So 2 plus t squared du dt equals 0. And this problem is still second order for u, but it's lacking a zeroth derivative of u. And so it's really just a first order differential equation on du dt. So to, to formally encode that, we make a substitution. We say v is du dt. And then this is just v. And this is the time derivative of v. Uh, so let's write it that way and also divide through by t. We get dv dt plus 2 plus t squared over t v equals 0. Uh, so this is a first order ODE that we can solve using our uh, methods from first order ODEs. That will give us, by separation, dv over v. I'll take this over on the other side with a negative sign. I'll divide by v. I get dv over v. And on the other side, I'll have negative 2 plus t squared over t dt. This is now separated. All the v's on the left, all the t's on the right. We can integrate both sides. We get ln v equals uh, technically absolute value of v equals on the left hand side uh, when we integrate negative 2 over t we get negative 2 ln of t again technically absolute values uh, minus t squared over t gives us a minus t when we integrate that we get minus 1 half t squared plus an integration constant 
which I'll call C2 tilde. Now, from first order ODEs, we know that when we exponentiate both sides, uh, the absolute values uh, can get incorporated into this constant C2, which drops down and we get V equals some slightly different constant C2 E to the negative 2 ln of T minus 1 half T squared. And here, uh, negative 2 ln of T is ln of t to the negative 2, and then e to the uh, sum, e to a sum is e to uh, the product of the two e's. So this becomes e to the ln of t to the negative 2 times e to the minus 1 half t squared. Uh, finally, ln e to the ln of t to the minus 2 gives us v equals c2 times 1 over t squared e to the minus 1 half t squared. So we found v. Now u was defined to be the derivative. Uh, v was the derivative of u, so to get u we must integrate v. So u is c2 times the integral of 1 over t squared e to the minus 1 half t squared dt plus an integration constant c3. This is an indefinite integral, uh, and so it's okay that it's a function of t, and I, I write it in, as a function of t with a dt when it's in indefinite form, but I can't, I can't actually integrate this. Uh, e to the minus 1 half t squared over t squared is non-integrable. So I'll leave that as a definite integral. And when it's a definite integral, the upper bound is set to t. The lower bound is typically set to the initial time value, whatever that happens to be. In this problem, it's not defined. And when t is a limit of integration, then it can no longer be the dummy variable over which we integrate. So we need to change these t's to something else. And typically, uh, we use s to replace t. So t to the minus 1 half s squared over s squared ds. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just a dummy variable that must be different than t, since t is now being used. Plus c3, again, an unknown uh, integration constant. Uh, so now we have u. To get x2, we simply multiply by t, and we will be done. So x2 is c2 t times the integral from t naught to t e to the minus 1 half s squared over s squared ds plus c3 times t. Remember c3, this integration constant is part of u, c3 t. So we have now a second homogeneous solution. It turns out to include uh, a multiple of the first homogeneous solution. So this is, in fact, uh, the general solution. And we can just remove the x2 subscript there. Uh, since we picked up a factor of the homogeneous solution, uh, that is, is fine. We don't need to then add another uh, constant times the homogeneous solution because it's already an undetermined constant. So we have our first given homogeneous solution. And we use reduction of order to find our second homogeneous solution. We had to leave it as a definite integral, but that's fine. This is a perfectly legitimate way to define a function. Uh, it just happens that we can't write it down in some simple form. And so now we're done.